Welcome back to Stormworks Unlimited. This is Tater, and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on the ballistic missiles. Stay tuned. All right, you guys. Well, you see, I've got my ballistic missile up here, and this one's actually packing a really big punch. It's running 36 small warheads and one large warhead. And uh, it's got a, a really good range. I would say it's it's over right around 19, 20 kilometers. So somewhere in there. Before we dive straight into the tutorial, let's talk about the required components. Um, in the green, we have the required components. And in the blue, we have the optional components. So this is stuff for whatever vehicle or base you're going to use to launch that you will have to have as long or to go along with the missile. So first up is a Radio RX small. And then you'll need a large keypad, a lockable button, a key button, and a push button, along with a battery and the microcontroller. So <clears throat> I'll just tell you what everything does. Obviously, the antenna is receiving and sending data. The keypad is what we use to enter in where we want to shoot the missile. The lockable button is our launch button. You don't have to have a lockable button, but I prefer it. It prevents you from accidentally firing at nothing. And then we have the key button, which arms the system. You could just use a toggle in place of this or whatever you want to use. And this is a push button to shut everything back down. So let me show you guys how it works. And uh, we're just going to set us a GPS waypoint out here. So we turn the system on and the keypad's going to start flashing at us. And nothing's going to happen over here. And it, we can't even launch the missile. So we have to enter in our GPS data. And then all we have to do is hit launch. Um, once you enter all that information in, if you're using the secondary systems over here, the optional stuff, it gives you a map. You can see the missile's on its way. It gives us tons of data. I don't have anything labeled just simply because uh, we'll go through that in the tutorial, but it's given us tons and tons and tons of data. This is obviously range to target. You can see it's 18,000 meters and so forth. So let's go ahead and just dive into this and... Uh, I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. And uh, there are two things that will be required for you to download from the workshop, which is the Ballistic Missile Guidance System microcontrollers. You'll need the Master and the Slave's microcontroller. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump into the workbench and we'll start building this thing. So we're in the workbench. And this is pretty simple. First thing we just need to do is type in rocket. And um, we're going to go ahead and use the huge systems. So you don't have to, but for the purpose of this tutorial and to make sure everything's going to fly, we're just going to go ahead and build it like this. And then you guys can modify it however you want going a fourth. So you can put down five, six, seven, eight of these, whatever you want to do. It doesn't, I mean, as long as you got enough, this is what's going to determine your range. And it will also change the handling characteristics of the missile. But um, a lot of that is done within the microcontroller. So it's not super picky. So um Next, we'll need a rocket booster huge to go on the back. And you know it's the back because it's the pointing to the back of the arrow. Don't point towards the front of the arrow with the booster. You'll be shooting backwards. Um, go ahead and grab your booster and turn your burner rate down to around 15% to start out here. So we don't want to be going mock speed and then crashing so fast that we don't even know what happened while we're trying to dial everything in. Um, so go ahead and just dial all that down. From here on out, you're going to go out about 8, 9, 10 blocks, whatever you want to do. You just need to have enough room to put a large antenna in here. So just confirm that it fits. And it does. So that's the biggest thing. You just need to have enough room, which is 10 blocks for a large antenna to fit in here. And the reason we, have, we want to use a large antenna is it has a range of about 20 kilometers, whereas the other ones do not. So... Build this out to 10 blocks. From there, we're going to come out to the end, add one, actually, we're going to add one straight up, and we're going to go ahead and get a warhead. Use whatever warhead you want. I'm just going to stick a large one on it. Um, it would be best for this tutorial if you did the same. So once that's on there, we can actually delete a couple of these, and we can make our rocket look much nicer. We just delete this whole row. Rocket will look much better when it's all said and done. So 
Next thing we need is the Ballistic Missile Slave. Ballistic Missile Guidance System Slave. And this can just go right here. And once again, the links are in the description to get these from the workshop so you have them. Um, I tried to make a video about how to make the controller. It is insanely complicated for a tutorial video. So we will be best off just to go this route for today. So <clears throat> once that's done, all you need is the large fins. So it doesn't matter which it doesn't matter which way they are oriented as long as they're all done in the way that I'm going to show you to do them. So you can be either negative up or positive up. It doesn't matter at this point. So go ahead and make sure your symmetry is on and slap them on here. Now you can do them straight up and down like this. I can get that one to go. Or you could put them a little offset like this, make them pretty. Or you could even get crazy with it and do something like this. So whatever tickles your fancy, as long as the arrows on all three of these are going the same way. Then we're going to move up here to the front of the missile and we're going to push O. And then I'm going to push, sorry, I'm going to push J twice to rotate it. So what I'm doing here is I have positive up in the front and positive down in the rear. So same thing. Do Go ahead and do your three fins. And since symmetry is on, they're the same from left to right. Next up, we're going to switch symmetry mode to Y. We're going to do the same thing in the back. Boom, boom, boom. Like once again, I don't care which way they're going. Pushing O to mirror. I'm going to push K twice to rotate. And we're going to slap them here, here, and here. Okay. Now turn your symmetry mode off completely. Go down to the bottom of your missile and delete the middle one in the back. Just the middle one, nothing else. So now you have to do a little bit of decorating if you're going to do it. And we're going to do this now so we don't accidentally take the place of um, a component later doing it. So I usually just do like three there and then I do... Um, something like this once again this is all optional so however you want your stuff to be is what you do so as long as you make something respectable you'll be happy with it And I'm going to go ahead and just slap a block here. Oops, not that one, though. Inverted pyramid. And here. Do that one right? I guess it's going to go that way. Yeah, so it doesn't look hideous, but it could be better. So down here on the bottom, we have 3 by 10. Or 3 by 9, I guess. And we're just going to add that uh, bottom layer in there. And we're going to go ahead and get some small batteries. And all we have to do is just put a couple of these down here. I just do three. It's a, I don't. I think you can get away with one. I um, haven't fully tested that. But for now, we're going to go ahead with that. So next up on the list is the RX Huge. Now I put this in clear up here at the top because we need to make room for another important component and this is kind of just out of the way up here you could also not have the big battery down there and probably stick it there whatever you want to do but you need an rx huge from there you need a radar and you do not want to use the radar missile you want to use um you can actually use the big radar if you want to get creative but it's unnecessary so we're just going to use a basic radar and you just stick it anywhere in there it's hunky-dory fine. So there's tons of other sensors, and we don't need to go through everything um, piece by piece because it's all right here on the microcontroller. So I just went with the radar and the RX because they're composite, and a lot of people forget those. So make sure you hook up your radar to your radar, your data receive antenna to data receive on your antenna, data send, the data send. It's that simple. You still got to hook this stuff up, which is um, your frequency. 
So this is antenna radio frequency, hook it up, and your transmit mode, which is, uh, where is it? Radio transmit mode, just like that. And uh, the other thing we need is radar active slash arm warhead. So that goes to both of those. And then uh, make sure you click on, now that you have the warhead, the radar, and the booster, you need to change some settings on these. So go to your warhead and go ahead and crank it up to about at least 30 meters per second. And I'm going to 40. Um, this is going to depend on the speed of your missile. But uh, if you have this set at zero, like the factory setting, when we uh, arm it, it's just going to explode. So at least 30 like do whatever, 30, 40, something like that. Go ahead and click on the radar, and this sweep mode needs to be changed to static. Don't mess with any of the sliders except for FOVX, go to about 0.13, and an FOVY 0.13 also work out just fine. And once again, double check your booster to make sure you're somewhere below 20%. Okay, once we're done with that, we can just go ahead and go back into the logic mode and we have all these to connect and if you can't remember where everything goes it's all right here so the only things that you that's not specifically labeled are yaw which just go to the two outer ones on the top leave this middle one empty and all the other vertical fins And then for the roll goes to the one in the middle on the top. Pitch goes to all of the horizontal fins. And once again, the orientation doesn't matter as long as you are opposite from front to rear on the pitch and the roll or the pitch and the yaw. The roll can be either direction. Um, now we're down here to GPS X cord and GPS Y cord. So we need a GPS sensor. Boom and just slam it in there wherever it doesn't matter so GPS X cord X coordinate GPS Y cord Y coordinate next up is the speed sensor and you're gonna want a linear speed sensor and you can just slap that anywhere don't worry about changing the settings you can leave it on absolute hook it up to speed next up is the altimeter uh, let's turn symmetry mode off Slap it anywhere right here is good. I'm sorry, pushing all kinds of buttons here. We have a tilt sensor pointed right. So we need a tilt sensor. And we're going to put it right over here, pointed to the right. And then we also are going to have one pointing forward too. So we're going to go ahead and add both of those. So tilt center sensor pointed right and tilt sensor pointed forward. And then we need a compass the sensor just make sure the arrow is pointed the same direction as your missile and hook that up to compass over here we have fuel remaining though this is bugged or something i can't get it to work right but that hooks to that and we have the trigger here which goes to the rocket booster trigger and then we just have a couple i think we're just a darn near done here so Target detected, we're not going to worry about that. If you want to use, you can you can actually do target detected to your warhead, um, which will not allow your warhead to blow up unless you have a target detected. Um, I find it works just fine either way. You can go straight off of the, the turning the radar on, and I'll show you why I did it that way here in just a moment. Or you can go off of we detected a target. So either one of those is just fine. Double check all your connections, make sure everything is good, and you should be good to go on the rocket wiring and sensors. So next up, oops, next up we need the, what is it called? It is track. It is called the connector track. And we're going to put one down like somewhere right underneath this, um, microcontroller and just slide it all the way back we don't have to be too much of a perfectionist here but uh, something along those lines is what you're going to want to do from there we need a hardpoint connector attachment 
and I like to use the square ones and that goes right in front of your rails from there we grab a hard point connector body and just slap it on the bottom of the rocket go up in here to your selection grid make sure you clear contents control click on that hit cut push L twice go down to go back to and hit paste and that sits right there like that and then we are going to need the gripper sliding connector gripper and that's going to go pointed right up at the rocket right there from here you delete your first rail and you put a block in and you put in one of these wedges now what this does is prevents the rocket from sliding backwards off of your launcher when you go to fire it once again this is on a timer so you can ride the rocket and troubleshoot any problems that you might have okay so from here out the rocket is pretty much done other than we need to hook up power so just hook all three of your little batteries together and hook every single thing up just hold control and click every single node except for the hard point connector body. Everything else needs to be hooked up. And when you hover over it, everything should turn white from yellow. And I think we're good. So we're not gonna worry about anything else here. Okay, so here we're gonna build a stand. I'm gonna turn my symmetry mode back on just to build a kind of a tripod-ish -ish stand. And then I'm gonna turn symmetry mode off and I'm going to come over here and go ahead and put this in. And this is just a wall so we can fire the thing. And then um, we also can't forget that we need a pass passenger seat or a padded seat on the top of this rocket. So we should be good there. Okay, so the next thing we need is the Ballistic Missile Guidance System Master Microcontroller, which is once again in the workshop. And this one... I talked about the required systems prior or the beginning of this video. Um, you don't need all that stuff. You don't need to hook all this stuff up. It's just if you want the data, it's there. So um, what you do need is an RX small. It could be large. It could be medium. It doesn't matter. Just plop it wherever. You need a battery, any size you want to have. You need a keypad, and it needs to be a large keypad. You need the lockable button. You need a key switch and a push button. Okay. Once again, we need power to all this stuff. So go ahead and hook every single component up from the battery. Make sure you get this hard point connector body up here. And then we can actually label a few things if you'd like to launch arm reset target coordinates okay and all you have to do is hook this stuff up and we have output b which goes to b keypad we have output a which goes to a keypad we have launch which goes to launch we have arm system which goes to arm system and we have reset which goes to shutdown system now the only thing we have to left to do is unlock the button which is going to be in where is it fire button unlock if equipped we also have to hook all this stuff up frequency transmit mode Why can't I find transmit mode? Oh, I changed the wording and couldn't find it. That's why. Um, and then we need to go one from launch up here. Hard point launch node. We also need to hook this one up, which is the launched button, which I forgot to hook up earlier. So make sure you get that. 
we don't have to worry about um, releasing the connector or the brake on this because it'll every the hard point is going to act like the connector and the brake for everything here. So, um, so here's the thing: we have a couple different options here for different things. Um, we have missile door closed and open position. This is like if you watched my submarine video where the doors open. This is for that, and same with missile pitch. Um, so when you turn the key, it'll turn your miss open your doors and turn your missile to whatever you predetermined throughout these numbers here. We're not using that in this situation, so we're not going to worry about it. In here, we have a lot of different options. So we have radar on range, which is also going to activate our warhead at 1,500 meters from target. We have cruising altitude set at 1,000 meters. Anything over about 500, you're not going to hit anything. So I just like a thousand. You can play with this as you're going along. Your attack altitude is where your missile is going to dive to when it gets within the attack altitude range. We have the booster delay of two seconds. That's just so you could helps you hop up on the seat a little bit quicker. The PID is for your uh, altitude while cruising. So um, these numbers are actually fairly solid here. I wouldn't mess with those if you don't have to. Those would be last resort. Um, pitch hold back multiplier is what's going to prevent the missile from going straight up and backwards and upside down. So um, it seems to work pretty good on 10. Uh, we can monkey with that later. Inverting the PID will basically, if you, because we just stuck these on randomly, we don't know if we're going to be going up and down and the PID is going to get messed up. So that's what that is for. And radar pitch multiplier is how it's going to dive when it gets a radar lock or how it's going to track roll multiplier is how it's going to roll left or right yaw multiplier is how it's going to turn left and right so for right now we're not going to mess with any of it and we're going to spawn it in and see what we forgot to do so um go ahead and arm it we don't have our backlight hooked up but that's okay type in some random coordinates hit the button and jump on the missile Make sure you don't have damage on. And I can tell you right now we're going the wrong way. And we went upside down. So, this is super easy to fix. Not to worry, if don't panic on something like this. So, the first thing we're going to do, if we're going the wrong way, turn our yaw multiplier to either a negative or a positive, whatever it is. And... I couldn't really tell if we rolled the wrong way or not. So for right now, we're just going to go ahead and do a relaunch. Once again, turn your... It's better if you turn your vehicle damage off. Turn infinite electric on. Turn infinite fuel on. Just for testing. And we should be going that way. So... Did I actually... I don't think I actually pushed the launch button. Oop, there we go. And jump on. Take it for a ride. So as you can see, we are having some issues with the steering and the roll. So our roll is actually backwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert our roll by going to back into the microcontroller, roll multiplier, and adding a negative. Spawn it back in. Also feels like we're going a bit on the fast side for testing purposes, but uh, should be all right for right now. So it's not perfect. I'm not even sure if it's going the right way. And I believe it is heading towards... Is it heading towards zero, zero, zero? <laughs> it is. So we've got a couple issues here. Or there's a couple things that could be here. Um, it's heading towards zero, zero, zero. You need to check that you actually typed in. Um, oh, here's what we did. We didn't hook our composite data up to our antenna. Um, and then the other thing to check would be the keypads are hooked up in the correct spot. And there's power to everything here. 
Um, so easy fix. still going to go to zero 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 because that's where I put my waypoint at but um, we're having a little bit of a yaw snap so if you guys noticed it took off and snapped super hard to the right and all you have to do is if you're getting a yaw snap is change your multiplier down to just a lower number as long as everything is golden as far as the way it's working then you should be good there so let's actually just change our waypoint here and we're going to launch it towards whatever this is. Doesn't even matter. Boom. And we are off. We have a couple things to test yet still, but um, for right now, we're going to go ahead and just finish up the missile because it is working like it's supposed to. So number one is we are going to um, go ahead and grab some wedge blocks, turn your symmetry back on, and fill in these corners. I'm like struggling here. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom. Now you have the option of adding more warheads like I did on my example there. And you want to use the bodies like this or whatever you want to do there. If you can get a medium in it, it should still fly. You just have to get a little creative. But um, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're not going to be adding anything in there. Um, just making sure that everything works. So, um, once again, we have all the optional things we can do. We're not going to go through that, but it's all labeled on here. Um, the one thing I did want to add was the keypad backlighting. Um, but all these are labeled, so you can go ahead and put whatever you want on there. You also use the monitor, which is here. And it's set up for a 3x3, three three, but I think it'll work on just about anything. Um, in fact, we're just going to try it. Let's, uh, let's close that out. Let's just get the big bad out here. And you put your power there, and the, or your monitor signal, and your power up. And then it also has monitor on and backlighting, and that's for all your gauges and whatnot if you want to use those. So um, let's actually fire at somewhat of a target. And I'll show you guys how all that works. So go ahead and enter your coordinates and arm the system and fire the system. Yeah, and this is working just hunky dory. Um, once in a while it just does that. I'm not sure why, but it, you can see it is traveling right along towards the target. For some reason, my monitor clipped into the floor a little bit there. That's why it looks funny. Oh. Yes, when you have this problem, is what you, oops, what you need to do is pull it back into the workshop and add a keep active block. The missile is technically designed for being shot from another vehicle. And how you know if you need to keep active is if your missile body is red, you need to put a keep active on whatever the red body is. If you're riding the missile, oops, you don't need to keep active block. If you're firing from the ground, you need to keep active block. So um, let's go ahead and actually turn our booster down a tiny bit, and that will give us a really, really, really good range. So I'm going to take it down to about 12, spawn it in, and we're going to fire at the hospital boat. doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to be within about 1,500 meters of target, and turn it on, and fire it. And we're going to jump up in the seat. And we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we can hit a target. 
So as you can see, the glide plane, or it's not really a glide plane, but the way it, the trajectory here is it goes up fairly steep and then it just slowly settles out to a thousand meters. That was what the forward tilt sensor was for. And that tilt sensor counteracts the pressure of the PID. So it prevents your missile from firing straight up or actually just like it'll shoot up to, let's say it gets up to like 200 meters, but it still says I still need to go 800 meters up. So it's pulling back on the stick and the missile starts doing flips in the air. Just having that tilt on there and then adding all those numbers into the PID just makes a nice trajectory, nice arc of a trajectory. And then you'll see as we start to go down, when we get within the firing range, it'll do the same thing. So by firing straight up, we burn a lot of extra fuel to climb, but we're not gaining any horizontal distance. And what we really wanted to do is make these missiles as long range as possible. If you watched my first one, you'll know that it fired it like nearly 100 kilometers away and hit. So they're all this little stuff adds up quick and firing straight up burns a lot of fuel quick just because you're not helping yourself gain any distance horizontally so that's why we went with that system and you'll see as we come in here it's going to dive hard and then it's going to start to do the same thing with the trajectory where it's going to say oh hey start pulling you know nice gradual turns and here it goes same thing gradually dive Hospital boat is not loaded in. Oh, we're loading in now. You can see we've locked up a little bit here. I've been having this issue with the hospital boats lately. And uh, it sees it. Let's go ahead and turn our vehicle damage on. We actually ran out of fuel. But we still whopped it. So, as you can see, target is hit. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I know it's long but uh, it's the fastest I could make it so um, once again this missile well the first one I showed you at the beginning of the video will be in the workshop with it all painted and all the warheads on it for you to download and use as an example because it has all the secondary stuff on it as well and then the two microcontrollers that you need for this will be in the workshop as well. Check out the links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my Discord. Um, I try to answer questions that guy or that folks ask me. So feel free to jump on the Discord. Um, there's a link in the description as well. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching.